Hello, everybody. We're back. Maybe, sort of. I'm not sure if we're going to use this one or not. We never went anywhere, really. We never, yeah. We're We've been here this whole time. Still watching movies, still obsessing endlessly over them. Um, we're back. You might be listening to this as a podcast, if I figured out how to do that. Or you're watching this at the front of our Sunset Review. So, yeah. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us after such a long hiatus. And yeah, we're going to talk about Sunset. Uh, the... Oh, I think it's Hungarian. Now I've forgotten. It's Hungarian. The by Hungarian the same guy that did Son of Saul. Which we haven't seen. And I don't know what his name is. It's something hard to pronounce that sounds really cool. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to do no spoilers for like a minute and do our overview. And then we'll do spoilers. We'll tell you when we're going to do spoilers. Um, we saw this in theater, like, I mean, we're like three weeks to a month behind because we're not doing this regularly. Mm -hmm. I think we saw this at the Royal, as we always do with the foreign films. And, and just so everybody knows, I mean, if you're listening to the podcast, this should all be as one thing. Uh, and it, it's all sort of themed around movies that Sarah likes. And Sunset is about... A woman returning to the city she's from. She's been she was she was orphaned at a young age. She, I think, learned how to be a seamstress, or I'm not sure what the word is, but mm -hmm. and she's coming back home to well, not home, but to where she's from and to the store that her parents used to own. But they died in a fire, and now she's back. And there's some. She's like they didn't realize she was. I don't know if the owner didn't realize, because now somebody else owns her parents' store. and your, they were... your description of it is about as confusing as the film is. Yeah, it, ultimately, that's that's the thing. She comes back, messes things up for everybody else. Confusion ensues. Mostly, she just wants to make hats. <laughs> Except that that's, that makes it sound really sort of uh, I didn't see and... her make any hats, man. She That is the thing, though. She never... Okay, okay, sorry. No spoilers yet. <laughs> I, I, I think when I saw this, I didn't love it. <laughs> And I don't know that I love it now. I like it more now. But when I saw it, I was a little sort of... My overview statement is probably that, like, I wasn't sure how seriously it wanted me to take it. And because of that, I wasn't really... I got confused when I was watching scenes where I was like, this doesn't make sense, and da-da-da-da-da. You know, I'm like, why is it here? Why are we there? But as the movie keeps going... Like, the later parts of the movie, I'm like, oh, wait, no, I get what it's doing now. It's taken a half or more of the movie to get there, but I finally understand what it's doing, and I'm in on it. And I feel like it grew on you after Yeah. when we talked about it. I liked it more than anyone else. So the director's name is Laszlo Nemes. Uh, the film is... Um, kitten. Hi, kitten. Two hours and 24 minutes. It's long. It's long, as they often are for us. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like the general reviews I saw from everyone is that it wasn't as good as Son of Saul, which we haven't seen. So, no comparison there. It's a bit impenetrable. It's hard to tell what's going on. It's impenetrable because of the story, I think, not because of the characters. You just, you don't know what's happening. Yeah, and... um. You know, my favorite review of it, and I agreed with most of the bad reviews, I just didn't care. I'm like, oh yeah, those are all valid complaints about it, but I really liked it. Yeah. Um, there was one of my favorite reviews was that, you know, it does depict a living nightmare very well, but a film needs to be more than that. I don't think so. I think <laughs> depicting a living nightmare and doing it well works for me. So yeah. if you have my kind of taste... Uh, you know, it's definitely not for everyone. I don't disagree. It was, let's see, let me pull it back up again. It has... Well, it's, it's, it depicts a living nightmare, and it does it, visually it's really interesting, and I love the bleached out colors, and I love the style, and I've heard people say, including uh, YMS, you know, he, he was like, ah, it didn't make as much sense as it did in Son of Saul, and I'm like, I don't know that every scene made sense for the camera to be like sitting right over her shoulder that way. Well, but it was really creative and well done. Style. Yeah, yeah. I think you can say that. Oh, yeah. Like it's, it's really cool. I'm just not always sure like it made sense. It's claustrophobic. It's hard to see what's going on. I think he did this in Son of Saul from what I understand. Yeah. Um, you're looking at the back of her neck a lot or her face. Um, oh, yeah. 
So yeah, it has a 57% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I really liked it, and that's what I have to say in the broad about it. Yes, I think that's, in the broad, my final note will be, I've ultimately come around to enjoying it, and you've mentioned rewatching it at some point, whenever we have time, and I think I'd be curious to rewatch it. Ah, I was attacked! Uh, uh, I have, I do want to rewatch it, because I feel like now that I sort of am in on what it was doing, I might enjoy some of the beginning more. But it did take a while for it to really get into something. And right when I got out of it, I was like, that was really a Sarah movie. I'm not sure how Theo felt about it. So so if you're Sarah, you might like it. So yeah. let's go into spoilers. Spoilers. One, two, three. Spoilers. Well, I definitely think that it's long. Yeah. And the world building is great. But... There's points at which you can't possibly fathom <laughs> what her job entails anymore. She's not at it. She doesn't... You see her sewing once, I think. Like It's the loosest of, like, real world... Like, it, it quickly becomes a nightmare and, like, very if, yeah. ephemeral. But, like, it, it holds on to that one aspect where, like, she has a job and she's supposed to be working at making hats. Yeah. But she's never there. And she's... So you're constantly like, she's a... I would hate to work with her. No, but there's no consequences, except that they don't like her, but they didn't seem to ever really like her. Yeah. So that definitely throws it off. And it's... There's no... There's, like... It's supposed to build, like, tension or something, but it doesn't. Well, there's a point at which... You kind of, well, there's no consequences, so there's no reason to be tense. Yeah. Apparently, it's fine. Yeah. Um, Your kitten is like chewing the couch or something. She waited until we got started to really to get really, going. She, yes, there there a, are kittens wandering through the the yeah, apartment. She found a bell to knock around to. Um, but so when I was watching it, there was a point towards the middle where yeah, you're just like. It felt like moments in The Revenant, actually, where it's like... The Revenant. <laughs> God damn it. Where you're just going from one horrific thing to another, which I enjoy. Yes. But it's kind of like, and now what? Yeah. Like, and then I kind of decided not to take it seriously and that she... I guess because you lose that thread of realism when just whatever is happening, I decided that it was allegorical and that she's... The embodiment of destruction. Yes. And this is the teens of um, Europe. Well, Europe, so it's right before World War One. Which is just... I mean, I have a superficial understanding of World War One, but it just seems awful. Like, no war is good, right? Right. But I, the reasons for World War Two, like, kind of make more sense, whereas World War One, it was almost like, okay, you're Team Red, I'm Team blue let's just kill each other <laughs> like it was like i don't and don't like don't explain yeah it to don't me. don't at us don't, we don't we don't want to know we don't explain it to me but there's this real depiction of like decadence but then poverty but and but like no good guys no bad guy everybody's bad guys actually just oh, no, yeah. good guys, no good guys and just absolute destruction and just seeing her refuse to go to work, and then everywhere she shows up, people die. It was kind of, I don't know, fascinating to me, and, and just spoke to the instability of the times. Well, so right when, when I'm suddenly realizing that she's a metaphor for destruction, <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'm finally, I'm finally for this movie. I finally have some, like, interest in this movie, because... As you say, there's no consequences for her at her work, so yeah. there's no tension there. Yeah. She's also just constantly, like, I loved, I, there, I both loved and hated her character, and I loved her character because she was so determined, and she right. was full of purpose. Right. That purpose was thin air. It was like there was nothing there. Her, her purpose was she had to go to this place to talk to this person, and that was, like, it. There was no, like, and then I'm going to solve the mystery. It was just, like... I'm really, I love just how... Just determined to destroy everything by walking. Walking, walking. places and, and walking, yeah. And so I loved her sense of purpose, but like, because of that, it's like, I have no tension from the from her work or from the setting, really. Some of the stuff interplay between the characters, there was tension, and that's kind of what helps the whole film hold up, is there's a lot of good interplay between all the, the characters. Mm -hmm. But then she, there's also not a lot of tension for her because she's just constantly running headfirst into things. And at a certain point, you have to stop being like, 
anticipating it. You just have to be like, this is just ridiculous. <laughs> well, you're not anticipating it because you know exactly what's going to happen. Someone's yeah. going to say, don't do this, and she's yeah. going to do it anyway. Yeah. And that's just going to happen over and over and over again. Yeah. So, not too tense. Yeah. But I feel like there's a lot of kind of visual tension because, again, it's that well, free it's slowing mm -hmm. and there's a lot of repetition, like the, the tent that, like, first it was, like, set up for one thing and then it was set up and just watching kind of the, the things change around her was interesting to me. Well, and it's, it's like this thing where there's some really great sections, especially towards the end. Again, the end is really what... I don't know. Saves the movie is too much is is overdoing it, but it, but Except it, maybe that last shot. Yeah, <laughs> really saved. It, but there, but it, it really gives the movie a sense of permanence because she like walks into the tent towards the end of the movie and she's been trying to figure out like something's weird about the this, the the shop she works at that used to be owned by her parents, like going on with the girls there and like we're not sure what it is, but then we figure it out. And the scene where she figures it out is great because mm -hmm. she's basically switches place with someone because... Because first, someone told her not to do something. Because someone told her not to do something, which means she's immediately going to go do it, which right. is, I don't know, they're again, de metaphor for destruction. But so she's... The first scene is she's in a tent and everybody's dancing and it's just the most, like, carnival, like, of, of you know, the, the prostitution carnival or something. And it's just horrifying, but it's also just, like... This is so dark and weird and eerie. Well, and the men all look, they're not Hollywood handsome. No. They look like you'd seen, the, like, a sepia-toned 19-teens picture. Yeah. Like, they're they're bulky and mustache. Like, they have money. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. that's why they're sexy. But they're not, like, conventionally, they're not modern attractive. No, no, no. Well, and, and this, I keep using the word distinguished. Distinguished. I'm going to call them distinguished, and that's interesting. And then that's one of the scenes not long after that is one of the girls gets chosen and it's like, oh, it's going to be this great thing. At least everybody else is saying and our main character is like, no, it can't be. And she's right, of course. But so she takes the place and goes to the, the house or to the, I don't know what the palace, palace it's I guess the palace. It's the palace, where it is. And she goes in and it's all these men sitting around a table and she goes and sits down and I think they make her take her shoes off and they're all shoeless. And it is the nicest touch to the movie because it's just like, it's just that level of here's a bunch of old timey people and they're shoeless and there's something well, disconcerting that's, about that. That's the thing though. There's so much about it that's disconcerting or uncomfortable. These like old timey rich people with no shoes on. But yeah. then there's also like, you know, a wall that's busted open and they're yeah. looking for a pin in it. And The hidden room. I loved the hidden room. It was like, what the fuck was the point of that? But it was great. <laughs> it's like the movie of meaningful glances. Yeah. It. Uh, I liked it that yeah. you didn't know what was going on and that a lot of that lack of understanding was uncomfortable. Yeah. But I completely understand why for other people it becomes too much. Yeah. Because then you don't know what you're watching or what's going on or why. I, yeah, and, and for me it really, eh, the, this is going to be a recurring theme because all three of these movies are like this, but this movie did not do a great job of distinguishing how much, I, one of my things is I, what does the movie ask of me? This movie was confused in what it was asking me because at first it felt like it was asking me to take it seriously and treat it as this is the real world. Mm -hmm. And as it kept going, I realized that's not what it wanted. Mm -hmm. And you can change your question. You know, the movie can ask you to do different things at different places, mm -hmm. but it didn't do it. It didn't set things up enough at the beginning. So I was ready when it really turned into the metaphor, mm -hmm. which is why probably about halfway through or less than halfway through, probably like a third of the way through, I should have been thinking, oh, this is all just a metaphor. It's all just surreal. Mm -hmm. And instead it took like after the halfway point. So oh, it's, guess. it's, it was hard to, to get I get into. it. And I feel like we're kind of wrapping up. So, yeah. I mean, that's what the thing is. Like, I really liked it. I get why it has 57% because yeah, I mean, what I yeah. really liked about it was just the endless, uncomfortable barefoot rich men yeah. weirdness going on and yeah I, I... some truly like awful humanity in there and just like how they breed destruction and destruction comes on to them and the whole thing yeah. and i probably just have more of a an interest in that than a broad audience would but i know there's more people like me out there 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 is who just want to see weird weirdness yeah. loosely 
tied together by the fact that World War One is horrible and about to occur. Well, yeah, and you, you've slowly turned me, I mean, not slowly, like, we talk about movies all the time, so I've slowly appreciated these movies more. Yeah. 